can we jump jump in? What I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to go reasonably fast. You'll just have to keep up. <laughs> it has been recorded. Um, but what I'd like to try and achieve by the end of today's session is to give you everything you need to find, filter, and sort opportunities, and then to go and put the trade on as we're describing. So you'll have everything that you need from start to finish to be able to find and place trading opportunities. So that's my objective today. So um, if I, uh, well, could respect your time, you can respect my time, uh, please turn your mobile on silent. There will be a replay. And if you've got questions or comments, I'll take them as they're coming along. And you know we'll, we'll all have a great time by the end of it. If you do stay to the end, um, I do have something extra to say. I've got some free widgets and tools. So if you want a copy of the software and tools that I use, that you'll see throughout this, that, that they're, uh, that there's no fee for them. You can have them with my blessing. If I do forget, you can just email me, and I will get them over to you. And then with that said, let's go. So who is this for? Who is this for? What's this session about? Um, this isn't for you if you're if you're looking for the next shiny object. If you're lacking any sort of commitments, and um, if you're the type of person who's you know not quite ready to commit to one course of action, if you're looking for the the shiny glitter beards or the push button solutions, or you know it all and you think you know better, well, why are you here? You know, I, you know if you know what to do, if you, it's not for you. You know. I don't want to waste your time. If that's you, if you're looking for the push button solution, you know, don't let the door hit you on the way out. I don't mean to be rude, but it's just a fact, you know, it's just the way it is. It's not for you. If you are the sort of person though that you want to commit to something, you want to commit to your success, you don't need a lot of time invested. The the methods that I go through, they take longer to explain than they actually do to to, to do it. You know, you can do this in 30 or so minutes every day, and it's not really time intensive. So what I would suggest is that you invest in yourself. You just give yourself 30 minutes a day, whether it's with this method or someone else's method. Just give yourself three to six months to succeed at that thing before committing to you know something else. Again, remember, it, it's not a push button solution. Trading is not a, here's the, here's the secret answer. There is work involved. So if you're the type of person that does want to, to kind of knuckle down and do some work, the rewards will be uh, granted to you. So that's what I would suggest. So if give you the opportunity, if you want to leave now and don't want to waste your time, by all means, feel free to go. But if it is for you, then I'll welcome you with open arms. I've got a lot of time for serious traders who generally want to learn how to become better. So uh, who am I? My name is... My name's Philip Newton. I'm not a financial advisor. I just want to get it out there you know, straight away. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a Wall Street guru. I've never worked in the city. Um, you know, my very, very, very general business degree isn't worth the paper it's written on. And while I have traded and ran my own successful hedge funds, thankfully it was only briefly. And it was significantly more hassle and less glamorous than it's made out to be. The only thing I do consider myself to be an expert in is to actually make money by and creating wealth from trading the financial markets, be it Forex, futures, stocks, and more recently, stock options. And I know that because I do it every single day. I'm just a regular guy who's been studying the, and trading the financial markets for the last 22 years, and I've been successful enough to have been doing it full time since the year 2000. So I've got quite a few years under my belt, and as you can see from the picture, I am charged with very youthful good looks. Um, but that's just me. So let's take a look behind the curtain. So is everyone happy? Everyone on the same page? I don't want to waste too much time just jumping into. The backstory. If you want to know more about me, you know, by all means, by all means, um, you know, get in touch. I'm a scouser. I like the sound of my own voice. You know, I'll talk to you till the cows come about anything you want, uh, trading related. So if you want to know more, feel free to get in touch. We can have a chat on the phone or something. So um, a couple of questions. I want you to give serious consideration to these questions and, and have yourself some honest answers, or give yourself some honest answers with yourself. 
and um, because these questions they're going to be pivotal to your success both in the long term and short term and again while I do have something to sell at the end of this session it's irrelevant of what your what you're doing just be honest with yourself when it comes to trading at the end of the day this is a business and it needs to be treated as such so a couple of questions thought provoking questions to help you uh, navigate the murky waters and you know maybe become a better trader just if you can answer these questions so basically basically how long will you continue to be overwhelmed never being sure which trading information is right I mean I remember when I first started out way 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 back in the 90s you know learning how to trade reading books and it was overwhelming and perhaps the reason why it's overwhelming is that you're trying to do too much as we said literally just a few moments ago just pick something one thing anything it doesn't matter there's a sheer wealth of information out there and it's very easy to be overwhelmed find something that sits well with you and just commit to it for three to six months before moving on to something else there's always the grass is always greener folks so just commit to one thing and you will get some results again it doesn't matter whether it's trading whether it's business whether it's just life in general just commit to something and you will succeed on it given enough time given enough practice and just do it for 30 minutes a day so that's what I did. That was one of the things that I managed to succeed. And that's what we're going to go through. I'm going to give you one thing that you're going to be able to commit to, and it does work. Another question you might want to consider is how tired are you of making bad investment decisions? Again, you've got to come back and ask yourself why you're making bad decisions. Is it because you don't know enough information which sends you on that cycle of looking for something whatever that something is to be better and hopefully give you the solution that you're looking for maybe it's a lack of understanding maybe it's a lack of confidence well again it comes back to this commitment just stick to one thing and get to know that one method that one way of trading that suits you that suits your personality and get to know it very very well it's in about three to six months and then you'll start to see the good times come again the, the chances are that if you're making bad decisions you're probably bouncing around from strategy to strategy from method to method looking for a solution that doesn't really exist a push button solution is what I mean by that there's a little bit of work involved but it's well worth time invested you've got also got to ask why are you always getting in and out of trades too early what if we could have a solution for this that didn't get you in a trade too early, that didn't get you out of the trade too early or even too late. It, it's the Goldilocks method. It's just right. What we want when we're trading is to be able to have confidence in what we're doing with a very simple method, a very simple process, almost like an algorithm, a series of yes, no decisions. So the way that I have combated this for myself because I, ex I experienced this problem you know, in a big way I was getting in trades and out trades too early too late I didn't, I didn't know my arse from my elbow some days so the way that I dealt with this is in part what we're going to be looking at today to answer this question is have an algorithm and all an algorithm is it's a series of yes no questions has this condition happened yes or no okay we'll move on to the next series and it gives you the confidence and then you won't get in and out of trades too late or too early this all making sense folks it's just again just trying to provoke some thought and, and stir up you know your particular situation of why it's not quite worked for you yet how many times have you wished that you didn't take that trade I get I've lost count of the amount of times that I wished I'd never taken that particular trade it's, it's a horrible feeling again what we're talking about now is more the emotional side of trading and this is probably one of the biggest things that affects your decision-making ability usually the root cause of any emotional experience is the emotion or, sorry the, the, the root cause is um, position size probably your position size is too big you know you're not emotionally capable of handling that position size and probably through lack of confidence in the system or the method that you're trying to do and maybe you're live trading too early because you again you've not got the knowledge set so what we need again to combat that I wish I didn't take that trade 
that experience, that emotional reaction, is to have a systematic approach. It comes back to this algorithm that we just mentioned, a series of yes-no decisions that leads us to the conclusion, I either will be placing this trade or I won't be placing this trade. Here's my targets, here's my get-outs, and until those two things have, have happened, you know, sit back and enjoy the ride. You know, it's a very relaxed, it's a very calming way of trading. So trying to make back your losses. When, the last time that you placed a trade, when was the you know the reason that you placed the trade was trying to make back your losses? I spoke to a gentleman literally earlier today. He had placed several trades and was in a complete uh, state, a bad state of mind because the reason he placed the trades it was the wrong reason. It wasn't because his system or his strategy said, hey, this is a trading opportunity. Go and put the trade on. Here are the parameters. His reason for putting the trade on was yesterday he had a series of bad trades. And because of those series of bad trades, he put more bad trades on today because he was trying to make back the losses. It was increasing position size. And emotion, that's very damaging. So again, having a system, having a method, having a strategy in place to allow you to guide you through the decision-making process so that you never experience this trying to put a trade on to make back losses. What we'll see later on is you'll see that it's all math. The last trade has no bearing on the next trade. But statistically, what you'll see is that if you do enough trades with a solid strategy, the one trade that you placed that didn't work out, it doesn't matter. It's the collective. Again, just like a real business, if you're hoping that one product, the sale of one product is going to save your business and pay payroll and keep the electricity on at the end of the week. So, you know, if selling that one product is that much, that's not a business. But in the real world, this is the trading equivalent. Sorry, this is the trading equivalent. Try and make back your losses. That's not a business. That's not a way to trade. So I'm trying to keep up with the questions. Yeah, it's... Yes, the yeah, story of your life. Yeah, I, I can see that. We've all we've all done it. We've all placed these trades. Again, I'm not saying I I have placed these trades. That's why I know how to deal with them because I was trying to combat these issues. These are questions that I've asked myself over the years. So, do you ever feel like whichever stock that you choose is always the wrong one? Just give that some thoughts. Whichever trade that you, whichever stock you choose, it could be stock, it could be forex, it could be spread betting, it could be futures. Whatever you whatever you place, it always seems like it's the wrong one. Maybe it's not the wrong one. Maybe it's not the wrong trade. Maybe it's not the strategy. Maybe it's the way that you're placing the trade. That's referred to as expressing the position, expressing the trade. We're going to look at a different way of expressing the trade later on today. So maybe it's not the strategy. Maybe it's how we're deploying the trade. Give that some thoughts. There's more than one way to place a trade. How many times have you thought that if someone could just show you how it was done pro properly, that this trading and investment thing would really work for you? That's the question that I ask myself regularly. Am I doing the right thing? If someone could show me how to do it, you know, I get asked this a lot. I mean, I, I do coach and mentor people quite regularly, and these are the, this is the ultimate question that I get asked. It's having a method, a system, a methodical approach that consistently works. So that's what we're going to do today, folks. So hopefully some thought-provoking questions about your own personal situation reflect on them, give them some thoughts, and try and answer those questions. And a good, solid strategy should answer or prevent all of those questions or issues. So what we're going to do is we're going to free our time, because we don't want to be looking at all charts all of the time. We want to release the confusion. We want to gain some decisiveness. We want to command confidence when we're going to trade. That's it. We want to know exactly what, when, and why we're going to take action. So that's the aim of this uh, session. So we're going to look at one thing that you can do and start closing 68% of your positions in a profit. And again, that's a fact. I send all my alerts out in real time. Um, you know, there's, there's no ifs, buts, or maybes about this. That, that's a fact. That's what my clients come back and tell me to say, hey, we're closing 68, 72, 78% of trades in profits. So we're going to take a look behind the curtain. So what to expect today? So this is the itinerary. We're going to look at uh, two parts to this training session today. Part one is we're going to look at finding and filtering 
uh, stocks and opportunities. I'm going to give you a systematic approach to find opportunities. Now, my focus is US stocks and stock options, so I'm going to be focusing on stocks. Just please understand it can be applied to uh, any chart, any time frame. Um, but again, I'm using uh, daily charts and US stocks. So we're going to look at finding opportunities that you can do today in less than 10 minutes and effectively you could trade them tomorrow. So we're always know in advance what we're going to do. And then the second part is never getting stopped out again. What if you could never be stopped out again? Just give that some thoughts. Never get stopped out again. What does that mean to you? Think of all the times that you've been stopped out of a trade only to then see the original trade idea turn around and go where you thought it was going in the first place. So if you can eliminate being stopped out, then you'll never experience being stopped out and you can let the trade do what you thought it was going to do in the first place. Because of that, we can start thinking about probability, the probability on the trade. And I'm going to give you a very simple way to think about what the, the probability is. And it's got nothing to do with risk-reward ratios and all that. Literally rubbish. I've never looked at risk-reward ratios. They're absolute nonsense. But what we can do is start talking about probability. What's the probability on this trade? If we could define the success or the expectation of the position, it doesn't matter what the risk-reward ratio is. If you're winning 70% of the time, it's a good trade. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So part one, four full-step processes. We need things to trade. Stocks in your universe, instruments in your universe, a list of things that you look at on a daily basis. Again, it could be stocks, could be futures, could be forex. For me, it's stocks. So you need stocks in your universe. Second part of any uh, process is we need a way of filtering them to, to, to find stocks that we can trade today. And again, I don't want to waste time looking at hundreds of charts, spending hours looking through chart after chart. We want to be able to methodically and very quickly find, filter, and sort an opportunity. Third part of any good strategy is we need to have a way to place the trade, to trade them. That just means putting the position on. And the final part is managing the portfolio. The profits are not made in one trade. This isn't like it is an only fools and horses where this time next year, Rodney, will be millionaires and we're looking for that one thing that's going to work for us. It's about a series of small events to, to manage a portfolio of positions. That's what's going to make you a successful trader. So what we're going to focus on is the two in the middle. We're going to find things to trade and then we're going to show you how to put them on in a significantly more effective manner. So that's what we're going to do. Part one, three steps to finding stocks and trading them tomorrow. And we want to be able to do it in about 10 minutes. We'll cool with that. Is everyone still up to me? So if you've got pen and paper, if you're ready to take notes, this is where the note taking can start. It is being recorded, but if you want to take some notes, we're all still on the same page here. So, yes, yes, thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Paul. Excellent, thank you. Excellent, excellent, thank you. So, notes then. The three steps to finding opportunity. So, you've got your universe of, in my case, stocks, but you could have a list of currencies, a list of different time frames. Uh, it could be indexes, futures, UK stocks, whatever it is. But of that universe of things that you trade, what are the magic steps? How can we find something on that list of instruments to trade? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find a statistical price extreme. That's what I'm going to do. Find a statistical price extreme. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to find stocks at a logical stopping point. And then we're going to check for a sign of exhaustion. And that for me basically means it's ready to trade today. And I want to be able to do that fast. I want to be, be able to do it efficiently. I want to be able to do it effectively. Right, so that's, that's, that's the three steps. The st statistical price extreme, a logical stopping point, and a sign of exhaustion. There's actually a fourth one, um, which I need to add in. We'll go through that when we get to the charts. Um, but essentially, it's a very simple process. So number one, what is a statistical price extreme? I'm just catching up the questions. 
Uh, so Wayne, can this be done on Forex? Yes, it can. It can be applied on any market, any time frame. It's a very simple process. Um, just to kind of preempt further related questions, all strategies work. Everything works some of the time. Big revelation. Everything works some of the time. So it can be done on Forex, it can be done on futures, it can be done on different time frames. Again, I'm looking for the next opportunity, not just in a method, but I'm looking for the opportunity. Back in 2002, we nailed the, um, the next hot thing. If you go back and look at the forums, they're quite active on some forums back in 2001, 2002. We were talking about currencies way before they were popular. They kind of exploded 2004, 2005, and then everyone joined the bandwagon, but we were trading them years before anyone else because that was the next hot market. So what's the next hot opportunity? And this will explain why I'm looking at US stocks. It's an explosion of volatility. We've got a, a what, a seven, eight, nine year bull market. It's, the stock market is always going up. That's gonna come to an end. So when it does and we see a bear market happen, it's gonna create a spike in volatility. That's the opportunity over the next decade. That massive explosion in volatility. What's the best way to trade volatility? It's with options, hence stock options. Why the US markets? It's been an eight year bull market. It's only been going up. It's When it comes down, it's gonna come down hard, it's gonna come down fast. That is the opportunity over the next decade. So I'm early, but I'm certainly not gonna be late to that party. So that's why I'm trading US stocks, that's why I'm trading stock options. Can this be done on the Forex market? Yes, it can. Will I? Probably not. So, um, we're going to look at Bollinger Bands. I'm going to skip through a few slides because they're not relevant. Bollinger, Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Band is essentially a 20 period moving average, which is the center line. And then it runs something called a standard deviation calculation and then it calculates the upper band and the lower band at two standard deviations. That's it. Now, the good news is we don't need to calculate this. Software does it for us today. It's just so that you understand what the Bollinger Band is in a very quick sentence. So why is it important? The fun fact is 95% of data points, statistically speaking, 95% of data points are going to be inside the Bollinger Bands. Now, from the lips of John Bollinger himself, this is just a short term. Remember, it's a 20 period moving average, but long term, over thousands of data sets, studies have shown it's closer to 88%. I'm just mentioning that for a reason, because it still highlights opportunity. Statistically, on paper, 95. Reality, oops, can't even spell, reality, it's about 88%. Again, I'm just preempting the uh, question. So what does that mean for us? That means that, get my little colored thing, 95% of the time, or about 88% of the time long term, but over a 20 period move on average, 88% of the time, price is gonna be inside the Bollinger Bands. That's what that means. So that's what normal price behavior looks like. Normal price behavior. So what we're looking for is the 5% of the time the prices are outside the Bollinger Bands. That's pretty cool, right? 5% of the time price spends outside the Bollinger Bands. That creates a potential opportunity. As you can see on the screen there. So we've got a few instances where price is outside of the Bollinger Bands. So when price closes outside of the Bollinger Bands, it means that I have an opportunity. It's not an automatic trade, but it does mean that I have a statistical advantage. Does that make sense? So is everyone happy with that? So that's part one. Find a statistical, oops, one word. Find a statistical price extreme. That's what that means. Does everyone understand what, what I mean by the statistical price extreme? Hey Priya, yeah. um, see you still. Studying that, so you're studying Bollinger Bands for future knowledge. Yeah, it's a newbie. There's lots of good information, and um, what you might want to do if you're studying it, pre, is to go and look at um, probability analysis, standard deviations, and bell curves, because they all kind of interrelate with each other, and you'll 
um, probability distribution, that was the phrase I was looking for. So that's what you start to get into. And um, particularly if you go into the options world, it's going to be very, very interesting. Excellent. Thanks very much for all the feedback, uh, Al, Paul, Pri. Excellent. So that's what a statistical price extreme is. Now, if we were to go and look at every chart, again, my universe of stocks is about 300, it's about 390 now. When I took the screenshot, you can see there, 345 stocks on my, that's my universe of, of stocks. I'm not looking at everything. There's thousands of stocks worldwide, but I've got the most liquid, the most highly tradable stocks. And that's my shortlist, that's my universe. But if I was to look at every chart every day to look for those opportunities, it's going to waste my time. So while I'm looking for that statistical price extreme, I, I don't want to look at every chart. It's going to be a waste of time. So I want to be doing it fast. I want to be able to do it efficient. So how do we do this? We're going to look at a variation of the same indicator. So just so you understand what's going on. We're going to use a, a variation of the same indicator called percentage B, and it basically shows where price is relative to the Bollinger Band. So if the upper band represents 100 and the lower band represents 0, it tells me where price is on that sliding scale. And that's what this indicator is down here. Now, I'm not using it on the chart. I'm just so you can visually see what goes on in the background and you understand why it all works. This is what's happening. So this reading down here, is saying it's below the lower Bollinger Band. It's got a minus, a negative figure. So if I had a reading on this indicator of, say, uh, plus 110, then it would tell me that the current closing price is above the Bollinger Band. And if it was below zero, then it tells me that the current price or the current closing price is below the lower Bollinger Band. And that's how I can very quickly find, filter, and sort stocks. So when we look at them in a table form, we can see that there's the indicator, percentage B, and it's in a table form. All I need to do is click and sort the stocks, like you would do in a spreadsheet, and just sort the stocks. And then what happens is it ranks all the stocks relative to where they are in the Bollinger Band, because I'm looking for that statistical price extreme. And it takes those 340 stocks it takes them down to, what have we got? It takes them down to eight stocks. So these are the only eight charts that I need to look at. So instead of looking at 340 charts every day, I'm now only looking at eight stocks. Does that make sense for you? Does everyone understand the logic? This is, this is what makes it a 10 minute task. This is the, the, the secret source. This means that when I've done this in my morning, it takes me about 10, 20 minutes to do everything that we go through today. But this takes two minutes. Sort your stocks. Click, click, the sorted. They're the five or 10 stocks that I'm going to look at. That's it. Do you think it's easier to look at five or six selected stocks versus trying to figure out what you should look at in the universe of things that you could trade? It's going to be easier to trade. The other thing that I like about this is that it's, it's, um, it's methodical, it's mechanical, it's replicatable. It doesn't matter about your skill set. It doesn't matter whether you're a new trader, whether you're an old trader. Anyone can do this. Anyone. It's mechanical. So this is your algorithm. Is there a statistical price extreme? Yes or no? It's below zero or above 100 is your statistical price extreme. Cool. So step two, price at a logical stopping point. So what is this? What might this mean? It's just a, my fancy way of saying support and resistance or supply and demand. That's it. So that's all I mean by logical stopping points. Um, Yakim, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, quick question. There, the table that I'm using, what software is it? We'll see the software in a minute. I use TradeStation. You can do it in most platforms. You can do it in NinjaTrader. Uh, and I also have a desktop software that you can use that you don't require any software. So it doesn't matter if you, you've not got anything fancy or special. Uh, you can, uh, again, Ted, you can do it on stocks, currencies, futures, frogs, anything that you can put in a table. 
MT4, I don't know. I don't. I've never used MT4. It's a piece of crap as a piece of software. I don't like it. It's the worst tool you could use. Um, but if you can put any stock in a table form, you can you can do this. Ninja Trader, as I understand, it's a free uh, tool that you can use. So everyone's got access to free tools and, and can do this. I'm going to show you a place where you can get access to charts uh, later on today as part of what we're doing. So anyway, logical stopping points, support and resistance, supply and demand, it's just my fancy way of uh, saying that. Quick sidebar, why do I call them logical stopping points instead of support or resistance? It's more to do with the psychology of trading. I'm in it for the long game. I've been doing this 22 years now, and I want to be able to trade tomorrow. I also don't want to have any preconceived notions of what I'm doing. I'm trying to have an open mind. Where's the opportunity? So if I start calling things supports, while it's a great description in a textbook, the way that the textbooks describe it is it preconditions the mind into only being a buyer at support. And there is plenty of times where I'll be a seller at support. But I'll never consider them if I call it support because the textbooks have told me to buy support. You will never consider the break of support as an opportunity. So just a quick sidebar. So that's why I refer to it as a logical stopping point. Again, it's more to do with the psychology than anything practical. It just allows me to keep an open mind and not have a preconceived notion of what might happen. Again, just because price is at resistance doesn't mean it's going to stop there. Just because price is at support, it doesn't mean it's going to stop there. So how do we overcome the, 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 the preconceived notion of what might happen? Just refer to it in a very neutral way. It's a level of interest. It's a logical stopping point. It doesn't mean it will stop, but at least it's a logical stopping point. Anyway, so logical stopping points. Has price stopped here previously? Again, notice the algorithm again. This is a yes, no question. Yes or no. Can we all see that? Yes or no. Has price stopped here previously? All you're going to do is you're going to look left. That's it. You don't need to make it fancy. You don't need to make it complicated. You don't need to look at the exact penny or the pip or the tick. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, folks. Just look left. Has price stopped here previously? That's all you want to ask. Look left, it stopped there previously, it stopped there previously, it stopped there previously. That's it. It stopped there previously. So yes, has price stopped there previously? Of course it has. If you're not sure, or it's a no, guess what? You move on. Go look at something else. Look left. This is two-second job. Has it stopped here previously? Look left, yes or no. If you're not sure, go look at something else. It will be really obvious but it stopped. This perhaps isn't the best example. We're going to look at some later. But look left. Has it stopped it? Yeah, okay. It's, it's probably a good example of this is a logical stopping point. So does everyone understand that? Logical stopping points, another way of saying it's supply and demand, support and resistance. All you're going to do is wherever price is right now, so that's where price is right now, look left. That's it. Look left at the charts. Has it stopped here before? Yes or no? If yes, it's a stopping point. Cool. Then you can move on to the next part, and we're going to look at that in just a moment. <clears throat> Let me just have a quick drink, folks. Pause for breath. Everyone's still on the same page. How's everyone? Give me some feedback. Give me some love. Are we all, uh, we all enjoying ourselves? Give me a little yes in the chat box. <clears throat> it's pretty simple, isn't it? It's pretty simple. Absolutely simple. Cheers, Paul. Tund Mo, Pre, again, thanks for your feedback. Yeah, Havinda, Roger, Richard, Al, Helen, great to see you all here. It, listen, trading is, it took me, to, I keep saying this, it took me 20 years to make it this simple. I did it, what everyone else did, I made it as complicated as possible. I put 50 indicators on the chart, trend lines everywhere, moving out, everything. Dow theory, Gam theory, LA wave theory, it's going up, down, it's, oh, ridiculous. Did it. The same things that everyone did. You've got to do them to know that you should not do them. <clears throat> so, 
We want to, well, Franz, you literally took the words out of my mouth, to cut down the work from trading. The whole purpose of being able to trade is to free up our time and to give us a lifestyle that we can enjoy. My day pretty much consists of find a trade in the morning, in the afternoon when the US market's open, I put the trade on, it's two 15 minute segments. Between the, those two things happen, I'm enjoying a coffee, I'm reading a book, I'm going to see my ailing parents, make sure that they still know their own names. <laughs> you know, it allows me to go and do whatever I want. It allows me to do presentations like this. So that's what we want to do. We don't want to be a slave to the trade. We want to be able to trade for the lifestyle that we want. Uh, Wayne, quick answer, what's the success rate? If the mo it fluctuates, it's wrapped around 70%. It fluctuates between 68% and 72% uh, that I'm closing my trades profitable. Uh, I, you, I send out my daily alert so you know what I'm trading before the market opens. And 68% of the time I'm closing trades profitably. Some of my students have actually, we'll actually see that later, one of my students sent me a lovely note and he was telling me that he, he's doing, he's beating me hands down 78% of his trades he closes with this method. He's a little bit more selective than I am. I'm quite relaxed in my approach. He's a little bit more critical on the evaluation. But 78% of the time, he tells me that he's closing trades. And that's consistently over the last three years. Right. Do, 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 do. Some questions, we'll come to the answers to those later on. And I'll get back to them. Okay, well, back on track. I've had a drink. Couple of questions. You've got a little bit of my lifestyle. Another quick slurp. There we go. Right. So, okay. Sign of exhaustion. Step three is okay. We we found the stock. We found a quick way to put a chart in front of us. Second thing is looking left across the charts. Has it stopped here previously? Okay, it stopped here previously. Okay, so we're in a good location. And then the next thing is sign of exhaustion. Just be, as we said earlier, just because price is at support, it does not mean it will stop there. But we can look for some indication that it might be slowing down, it might have stopped, and it might be starting its next move. And that's what this sign of exhaustion is. Now, sign of exhaustion, for those who are a little bit more familiar with terms and concepts, it might be a hammer, a doji, a shooting star, piss line, dot cloud, cover and gold, blah, 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 blah all the fancy names. It doesn't matter if you don't know what they are. Really doesn't matter. Again, we don't need to memorize a list of things. We're going to make it dead simple because we're going to do it a new way. We're going to do it a smart way. We're going to do it the clever way. That's all that matters. Sign of exhaustion. We do need candlestick charts. Candlestick is the one on the right, or the two on the right rather. So all a candlestick is, you've got a, a rectangle in the center which is considered the body, and then I'm interested in, in the wicks, so the spikes, the sticks at the top and the bottom are the wicks of the candle. That's what we're talking about. So that's what I'm going to look at and evaluate. And what I'm looking for is a big spike and a small body. So, so that's what they, most of the time, that's what they look like. Big body, small wicks. And what I'm looking for is a big wick and a small body. Now these do happen all over the charts, if you look back at any charts, but because of our selection process so far, we've got a, uh, a statistical price extreme, and we've got a logical stopping point, and then because of that, those factors, it means that hey, we might have a good opportunity for a trade. Now let's consider when we stack the next opportunity, the next odds enhancer is this spike, the sign of exhaustion. Let's think about this for a moment. What is a spike? It's not just a fancy named candle that, you know, that came over, 16th century rice, paddy field, history of the candlesticks, who cares? It doesn't matter. Knowing all that stuff doesn't make you a better trader. Knowing what to do with it makes you a better trader. So what's going on? Understand price action. What is happening inside price? It, what's happening is price opens, it's sold off for most of the day or most of the time frame that you're looking at. Now let's think about this in the context of a story. Let's imagine for a moment the trading pits of old in the 50s, 60s, 70s, maybe even back to the 1900s, go back 100 years. 
and there's hundreds of people in the trading pits. Imagine for a moment, why did this happen? If we were to plot this on a chart, what happens in the trading pits when they existed? Because most of them are digital now. But in the trading pits, what happened is, imagine a hundreds of people shouting, sell, sell, sell. And the price is being driven lower and lower and lower. And the price keeps going lower and lower. It's sell, sell. And then all of a sudden, people stop shouting, sell. Really? People stop shouting sell. Yeah, and what happens is, is price stops. Because no one's selling at that lower price. It stops dead. Okay, dramatic example, but you get the idea. But then what happens, again, imagine the trading pits. Then what happens is people start, not only have stopped shouting sell, but then, again, picture the movie Trading Places, if you've seen it, everyone starts saying buy. Someone starts saying buy, a third person starts saying buy, a fourth person starts saying buy, and then all of a sudden there's a frenzy of buy, 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 buy. And then it drives prices, not only it's stopping the, 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 the price decline, but it starts to drive price higher. Buy, 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 and then it's back where it started at the beginning of the day. That is a dramatic shift in supply and demand. Dramatic shift. It's done a 180 degree U-turn. Does everyone get this? Does everyone understand what's going on? Yeah. Mark, yeah, I agree. Trading places, mandatory viewing. It's probably one of the best trading films ever. It's got some great act, Dan Aykroyd, Eddie Murphy, brilliant film. But it, you will also, there's a couple of scenes in there. You will learn more in probably three or four scenes where they explain the trading concepts. You'll learn more from that film than you will from many trading books. But this is what, this, what we've just described, folks, this is price action. Everyone talks about the highs and the lows and all the, if you can understand this concept of supply and demand, not just in a trading world, but just in life, this, this is economics 101, this is supply and demand. If you've got more of something than people want to buy, it's going to be worth less. Look at our currency, the quantitative easing is a great real world example. We've printed, <laughs> globally, we've printed more money. The UK has printed more money, quantitative easing. It's, if we've got more of something, it's going to be worth less. Is it any surprise that the value of our currencies declines? Absolutely not. When you've got more of something, it's worth less. If there's less of something and people want it, that's the catch, supply and demand, the price is going to go up. That's what we're talking about here. Now, when you tie in a statistical price extreme, a logical stopping point, and then you factor this in, you've got a powerhouse opportunity that starts to stack the odds of success in your favor. Yeah. I'm just going to pause there, folks. In my excitement, I went off on a bit of a tangent. But does everyone understand what... It's not just a spike. It's not a fancy name. It's not a fancy candle. It's real-world supply and demand. It's a dramatic shift. And I want you to appreciate what's going on here. So how, is there a spike on the candle? Yes or no? Small body, big spike, and as a rough guideline, you're looking for one-third to two-third ratio. A third body and about two-thirds spike. Again, the smaller the body, the bigger the spike, the better the potential, in my view. Again, it doesn't matter what it's called. Who cares what it's called? But you understand the concept now of supply and demand. It's a dramatic shift. So there are the three steps, folks. This is how we're going to find opportunities. A statistical price extreme a logical stopping point and a sign of price exhaustion. So what we want to do, again, we're going to go onto the live charts in just a moment so you can see this in action and genuinely see how easy this is. Click, pick, play. That's it. Click, pick, play. Click, pick, play. S click and sort. Select this, check those six charts. Select the stocks, look left across the chart. Has it stopped here? Yes or no? If no, go and look at something else. If yes, has it got a sign of exhaustion? If it has got a sign of exhaustion, then you can start analyzing the trade. If it hasn't got a spike, then we can uh, 
quietly move on and go look at something else. So, put the trade on. That's it. That's where we're at. Give me a moment, folks. So, um, before we go look at the live charts and we see this in action, how many stocks? I, I, was, I was coaching um, uh, an elderly gentleman. He's, uh, he's where, what is he, 79. And he, <laughs> I didn't re he didn't appreciate the, the click and sort elements. He thought he had to go and look at every chart. So this comes from him. So scanning the old way. He was taking three hours to look through 50 charts. Again, slightly more older gentleman. If you're a newer trader, you might take your time going through them. But ultimately, it takes a long time to go through every chart and do this manually. So the new way, it takes 10 to 20 minutes. In fact, what we'll see is it takes two minutes, is what you'll see. So if the old way found you two to three trades per week, now you can find two to three trades per day. If you've got more, quick question, if you have more trading opportunities that you're finding on a consistent and regular daily basis, do you think you will make more money? The old way? maybe 15 stocks or opportunities per month versus 60. If you're finding two or three a day, you might find 60 a month. Again, same question. Just by the sheer way of finding opportunity, you've got to be, well, you've got the opportunity. If you don't find anything to trade, you're not going to make any money. But if you've got more opportunity, there's more opportunity to make money. Again, I agree with what you're saying. Not, you won't necessarily make money, but you've got the opportunity to make money is what I'm saying. One of the biggest hurdles for most people, probably, I'd probably be close to maybe 80% of the people I've spoken to over the last sort of 15, 20 years, the one question they all ask is, how do you find something to trade? And if you're worried about whether you should trade something or shouldn't, there's no ambiguity with this method. This is set up. This meets the criteria. This is the trade I'm going to place. So most people think that this is difficult and it's too time consuming or it's too expensive. And what we've just illustrated, it, that it's actually really easy. It's not time consuming and it's really great value. And you can find something to trade in the next two minutes that's ready to trade tomorrow. That's awesome. It's got to be awesome. Right, we're going to look at the live charts. Uh, Franz, yeah, you're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head. You, uh, Franz just said you can make your capital work harder. Absolutely, yeah. So you're more now. What we're going to look at, tied into your comment, Franz, is that we're going to look at our at using our capital more efficiently and more effectively. Because if you were to try and trade stock directly or spread betting or CFDs, it's very capital intensive to have a portfolio as a small trader. But what I'm going to show you in just a moment is that it's not capital intensive anymore. And this changed in 2009. Again, we'll come on to that in a moment. But that's what changed in 2009. And this is why I'm excited for the small trader. Because now the small trader, again, which is, which is the second half of our presentation today, is we will be able to compete and probably outperform fund managers, hedge funds, because we now have the ability to do so, the technology is available, but more importantly, it's not capital intensive anymore with a simple change of how you trade. So that's what we're going to look at in a, a moment. Anyway, back on point, how can we find these stocks fast? How can we find them? Over to the charts. So this is, this is my platform. This is a trade station. Um, this is a more premium platform. Uh, you can go to tradestation.com if you uh, want to take a look at it. If you do sign up to Tradestation, folks, send me a message. I'll send you my tools. I'll send you my templates. I'll send you my light. You can have them with my love. It costs me nothing to give them to you. I spent, to be fair, I have spent several thousand developing them. Um, but you know you can have my version of them. Now the tools that we do use, they do come as standard. So what we're going to look at is the Bollinger Band version. So on the on the screen we've got the Bollinger Bands, 
which is wrapped around price, that comes as standard on most indicators, on most platforms. Over on the left, we're going to use the Bollinger, the Bollinger, and it's called percentage B. And that's what goes in the table over here on the left. I'm just going to expand this, folks, just so that we're focusing just on just on what matters. Okay, so this is the this is the percentage. I've got you got two versions of them, but nevertheless. So this is the percentage B. That's what this is. So what you can see is all the percentages here. This is the where price is relative to the Bollinger Band. So let's just take a look at uh, 3M, so the top of the list. Where is price relative to the Bollinger Band? So uh, according to yesterday's close, this is yesterday's close, it's not live, that's the key, so it's not, I'm looking at yesterday's activity. So yesterday, this top stock here, 81%, it was near the upper Bollinger Band. So the upper Bollinger Band's here, the lower Bollinger Band's there, and it was saying that it's about 80% of the range. That's what it's doing. So that's what we've got there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click and sort. Sort it, as we like to say. Sort it. See how quick that was? Again, I want to highlight it. It does not take long. So sort it. So my list of stocks is about 390. And now I've got 14 charts to look at. It's going to be a lot easier to look at 14 charts versus looking at 390. Now this next column, this one here, what I've done is I've had, this is the only custom thing, you don't, you can do this part manually. So I would typically go and look at every chart, but what this next indicator uh, column is, it tells me is there a spike on yesterday's candle, the last completed bar, the last completed candle, was there a spike? And if there was, it's going to say, uh, it's going to give me a bear indication if there was a spike on the high of the candle. And if it's a spike on the lower portion of the candle, it's going to give me a bull. So we can see that we've got one, two, three charts to look at. So my 390 charts has come down to 14. And those 14 has come down to three. They're the only three charts I need to look at. Can everyone see how speedy this process is now so then that's when I will go and look at the charts because I only need to look at three charts one two three do I trade today yes or no that's it uh, Steve Mack yeah just waiting for the uh, UK applications to go through so yeah you can use Tastyworks to do that it's a brand new broker same guys that did think or swim so yeah uh, Ash, we've not looked at the, uh, sorry, bull, uh, why not the bull charts? Uh, all the bull is, I see what you're saying. So why not the bull? The bull is, so if we've got a big spike, so this is the sign of exhaustion that we were looking for. If it's on the upper portion, it's going to give me a bear. If it's on the lower portion, it's going to give me a bull indication. So if I'm at the upper end of the Bollinger Band, I want the bear spike, and if I'm at the lower end of the Bollinger Band, I want the, the bull spike. Does that, does that make sense? So that, that, that's why I want the bull spike or the bear spike. So if I'm at the lower portion of the Bollinger Band, I'm looking for a spike on the lower portion, and if I'm at the upper edge of the Bollinger Band, I'm typically looking for a spike on the upper portion. Right, so now that we're here, do do do, why three and not six charts at the top of the list? So why three charts and not six? Okay, so just coming back to, so what we've done, do, do Jim, why three charts? So what we've done is we've sorted the stocks relative to where they are on the Bollinger Band. So these stocks here, there's 14 of them, one through to 14. They're all the stocks that yesterday closed above the Bollinger Band. So that's my... Point number one, statistical price extreme. So then the next column, 
Now, normally, what, what I suggested in the explanation, you would then go and look at those 14 charts, one at a time. And what you're looking for is logical stopping points, sign of exhaustion. Logical stopping point, sign of exhaustion. Because the, the, the statistical price extreme is just a quick way to give you five or six charts, in this case, 14, to look at today. So it's just a quick way to take a big list of stocks down to a small list of stocks. That's all it is. And then normally, you or what I described in the in the chart show is, okay, they're the 14 that I need to look at. Now it's, okay, well, what's going on with the charts? Then look at the next chart. Are we at a logical stopping point? Yes or no. Are we at a logical stopping point? Yes or no. And then if we're at a logical stopping point, we're then looking for a sign of exhaustion. So that's, that's the routine. Now what I'm suggesting is we can make things a little bit faster, a little bit speedier by automating something else. We can mathematically quantify what a spike is. So that's what we've done, or what I've done, in this next column here, this bull bear spike column. So I've got an indicator that analyzes yesterday's high-low range. And what it does is if yesterday, yesterday's high-low range represents 100%, it tells me what portion of the high-low range the, the upper wick represents. So in this case, it might be 60% uh, of the high-low range is a wick, and the largest wick was on the upper portion. So if that happens, we'd get a bear spike. And that's what that column over here does. So it saves me from manually assessing. I don't have to look at 14 charts. I now only have to look at the three charts with a bear spike. Does that make sense? So why not why not look at all of the the charts that closed outside the Bollinger and that's why. So I'm just catching up with the questions if you should bear with me a second. Can't quite see one of these. Okay. So So what we're looking for, just to recap, we're looking for a, st a statistical price extreme. Beyond the Bollinger Bands providing a statistical price extreme, that's it. It's, again, it's just a quick way to take a big list of stocks down to a small list of stocks. And if anyone asks, can this be done on Forex one more time, <laughs> I'm going to explode. <laughs> you can do this on anything. 60 minute charts, 50 minute charts, 5 minute, you do whatever you want, I don't care. This is what I'm doing. And what I'm trying to suggest is I spent 12 years specializing in Forex. Consider this room. I spent 12 years specializing in Forex. That was it. My hedge fund was based around Forex. I took 10 million to 20 million and then hung my spurs up. And what I'm trying to suggest to you in the bluntest possible way, that if I've stopped trading Forex, someone who was an industry expert, had a hedge fund, managed millions, I've stopped doing it. Why? Because I'm trading stock options. That's the next opportunity that will encompass the next decade. Just give that some, let that sink in for a moment. Give it some thought. Forex is not the best thing to trade anymore. The, the, the golden age has gone. It's dead. It's deceased. It's like the parrot. It is no more. So, click, sort, pick. So I want to look at, again, let's just do it again. So click, sort, pick. So I might look at, so this one here, I can see it's closed. Oh, where are we? It's closed above the Bollinger Band. It's got a bear spike on yesterday's candle. I can zoom into the chart and very quickly make the manual assessment. So the one thing that I still need to do is go and say, hey, has it got a logical stopping point? So now I'm looking at the chart. So here's my process. So now I'm looking at the chart. What's it doing? It's going up. Maybe I want to be bullish. Maybe I want to buy the dip in an uptrend. Currently, it's in rally mode. I need to wait for it to retrace. So this for me would need to be at the lower Bollinger for me to place a trade. So I'm going to let that go. Let's go and check out uh, this next one. So what's price doing? It's range bound. Again, looking back at the last 12 months, 
or 200 bars. If you want to do this intraday, use 200 bars. Looking back at the last 12 months, what's going on? It's going sideways. End of story. That's the dominant theme. Remember we were talking about price, the trading pits. Everyone's buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. Intraday turnarounds. This is what money flow looks like over the long term. There's no money flow in this. It's going up a bit, it's going down a bit. This is a range. We want price to be at the upper end or the lower end of the range to place a trade. Guess what? It's at the upper end of the range. We've got a sign of exhaustion. And in this already, I've got a bearish trade on from three days ago. Where's it going to go? It's Until something new happens, the same thing will continue to happen. That's the philosophy of, hey, pretty much everything. A body in motion stays in motion. No way of saying it. But until something new happens, the same thing's going to continue to happen. Price is in a range. That's the money flow. Well, it's probably going to continue to range. Until something new happens and the range breaks, it's probably going to continue to range. So that's what we're doing. We've got a lovely spike. Look left at a logical stop. Like, Has it stopped here before? Yeah, it stopped there before. That's it. I don't care about the pennies. We've got a lovely sign of exhaustion. We've got multiple spikes over three or four days. It's set up several times. I've got to be bearish on this chart. Where's it going to get to? It's going to go to the lower end of the range. That's it. Let's go back to Johnson & Johnson just for a moment. Uh, sorry, not Johnson & Johnson. Let's go back to Boeing. Okay, so look back over the last 12 months. In an uptrend, what you want to do in an uptrend? You want to buy the dips in an uptrend. It's currently in rally mode. So you want to wait for it to retrace and ideally at the lower end of the Bollinger Band. Buy the dips in an uptrend, sell the rallies in a downtrend. That's it. So now when you add that into it, the money flow that we were talking about earlier, the same concept that we look for with a spike, we're going to do exactly the same over the last 12 months. Just look, let's pick a chart, let's just pick a few charts at random. Pick a few charts. What's the, do what's the dominant theme on this chart, folks? Is it up, is it down, or is it sideways? You tell me. Let's just get this last bit. This is the this is price action. Jim down. That's it. Dead simple. That's all we need to do. The last 12 months it was going down. Maybe we want to sell the rallies in a downtrend. Just a thought. Next chart on this. I've just gone to the next one. I've picked them up random. What's this chart doing? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going sideways? It's going up. Paul, Jim. Yeah, excellent. It's going up. Maybe. We don't want to book the trend. The money flow is up. So maybe we want to buy the dip in an uptrend. There's been plenty of times that price has been at the lower end of the Bollinger Band in the last 12 months. Profits, 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 uh, meandering, a little bit of profits. It's really difficult not to make money and close 70% of your trades when you go with the flow of the money. Uh, range band. Again, it doesn't have to be a trend. What's price doing here, folks? What's the dominant theme over the last 12 months? And we're, we've got, we're looking at 12 months right now. Last one. The dominant theme over the last 12 months. Up, down, or sideways? It's in a range. Ash, perfect. Yeah, it's in a range. Okay, so when we're in a range, there's your range, we want to ideally see price at the upper end or the lower end of the range. If it's in the middle, not exactly the best place to take a trade on board. It's 50-50, it could go each, either way. But if we're at the upper end or the lower end of the range, guess what, until something new happens, the same thing is likely to continue to happen. It's in a range, that's probably gonna continue. The odds of success are in your favor. Guess what happened yesterday? Sign of exhaustion, Looking left at the logical stopping point. Now, the upper end of the range is also the logical stopping point. It's really difficult not to be bearish on this chart. It's really difficult. In fact, I've got a trade on this. This setup for me, this is a, a trade that went out in the alerts. If you want to follow this in real time, I've got no problem calling my trades in real time. IBB, India, Bravo, Bravo. This is the biotech ETF. If you want to follow this and take a look at it, See what develops. I've got to assume that price is moving lower. 
with this logic. Does everyone get this? So, the Bollinger Band is a quick way of putting a chart in front of me. Now I'm looking at it, what's, the pro what's this chart doing? Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it going sideways? If it's going up, buy the dip in an uptrend. If it's going down, sell the rally in a downtrend. If it's going sideways, identify the range and look for price to be at the upper end or the lower end. And that's it. They're the only three things that can happen in the world when it comes to price. That's it. Now that you're looking at the chart, look left across the chart. You've categorized it. You know which way the, the money flow is going. Look left. Are we at a logical stopping point? Look left and see if we've got a sign of exhaustion. If we've got a sign of exhaustion, then this move up to the logical stopping point might just be over. I can't, no one can say with 100% certainty. The best anyone can say is probably. I'm not going to bullshit you folks. I'm not going to say that it's perfect. It's not. You will lose some money some of the time. But you'll win more money more of the time. Got to be bearish. Simple as that. Right, I think we all get the idea. That's how we find stocks and opportunities. That, folks, that's part one. <laughs> that's part one. <laughs> oh, the best is yet to come. Does everyone get this? Is everyone happy? Let's just take a break. Whose heads are coming off their shoulders? Uh, Jim, as long as about 40% of the high-low range has got a wick, and approximately, uh, and it, it's at least 50% in its average range. Again, these are all things that can be measured. I mean, my tool that kind of uh, I've added to it, it does do that in the background. Visually, you can see it's got a big spike. Most people, regardless of experience, can say, hey, this, is, this has got a, a big spike and a small body. That, that's what I'm looking for. Don't overthink it. Don't, really, don't overthink it. Let me just have a quick slurp while I catch up with the questions. That's part one. We've looked at three steps. We added a fourth and unannounced fourth thing that we do. Three steps to find the stock. And then we added a fourth. Which way is the chart over the last 12 months? Which way is it going? It's going up, down, or sideways. It's going up, buy the dip and uptrend. It's going down, sell the and downtrend. If it's going sideways, it's in a range. And just check where price is in the range. It's easy to put a trade on it. It's the upper end or the lower end of the range. But that's it. That really is it. So I'm just going to catch my uh, catch my breath while I catch up the questions. Uh, Patrick, is there a the problem trading the UK markets as you trade the US? What's my reason? I did mention this earlier. Um, so back in 2002, we correctly identified that forex was going to be the next thing, the next best thing to trade, and by 2005 the explosion of the currency market started. So we were very early to what the next opportunity was. The point is, is that I'm not looking to trade the current hot thing. I'm looking to trade the next best opportunity. And if, if just to kind of show my age a little bit, if flipping beanie bears on eBay is the best use of my time and resources, then that's exactly what I'll be doing because that's the best use of my time and resources. Trading currencies is not the best use of my time and resources. It doesn't mean you can't make money on it, but it's not like it was in 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, 2008. The crash happens, and then the volatility was sucked out of most of the markets, especially the currency markets. If you put the monthly charts on, you will see that it's a dead fish. So, Patrick, does that explain so why not currency? The, the opportunity was back in 2002. By 2004, the opportunity was developing. By 2009, the opportunity was gone. So anyone who tries to tell you that currencies is the best thing to do with your time and resources is talking bullshit. Look at a monthly chart and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. The opportunity is better elsewhere. I'm not saying there's no opportunity. I'm not saying that you can't make money trading currencies. I'm saying you'll make more money elsewhere. So that leads to your question, why the US markets? That's what I think is elsewhere. Where's the next opportunity? 
Where's the next opportunity? Not just next week or next month. What's the next opportunity for the next 10 years? Because we've had the golden age of the currency markets. We've had that. It's gone. It might come back again. So what's the next opportunity for the next decade? With a, uh, we've, again, we've already touched on it. With an explosive bull market in, these, in stocks because of quantitative easing, it's created an artificial bull market. We've had back-to-back -back bull markets for nine years. That's been particularly exaggerated on the US charts. But let's just go and look at this. Let's give you the visual version. It's been particularly exaggerated on the US markets. I'm just going to change this to the uh, monthlies. Do, 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 and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so this is, uh, let's take a look at uh, GBP USD. So we're looking at the monthly charts. We're going to look at the pound against the dollar. This is looking at the monthly charts. So we've got here, so the opportunity for currencies was back in 2004. And there's the 2000, uh, 2005, and there's all the way up to 2007. This was 2008 crash. And that's what's happened ever since. This was uh, obviously because of uh, Brexit, Brexit nonsense. But what we can see is that the opportunity has not been there for the last five years. The opportunity was there. And if you can predict that, that's where you're best spending your time and resources, in that opportunity. Let's look at it on the euro, EUR, USD. So where's the opportunity? Is the opportunity in currencies? This is the monthly chart. monthly chart each of these candles represents one month this is 2050 uh, where's this this is again I know this is a bit of a sidebar folks but this is important this is 2015 the opportunity is not in currencies again other than brexit nonsense the opportunity was again 2008 2008 the opportunity has not been in currencies. The volatility is being sucked. It's getting smaller. Volatility is range of movements. Another way of thinking about it. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So if it's not in currencies, where is it? This is the S and P 500. Now we've been trading. We've been trading the stock market since 2009. 2009. So that's where 2009 is. We got really into it in options 2010. And it's been a glorious ride. So that's the opportunity. Now, why has this happened? This has happened because of quantitative easing. Artificial back-to-back -back bull markets. What is quantitative easing? Pr the government printing money. That's it. That's all it is. Guess what? When you've got more of something, it's worth less. Why the stock market is going up is because the government is basically giving it to the finance houses and they're putting it into the, the, the system inverted fingers and it's created an artificial bull market and this is particularly exaggerated on the US markets it's a straight line movement nothing moves like this it's artificial so when when not if when the bear market happens because we've missed not one we've missed two bear markets in a normal healthy cycle of an economy it's been missed Again, particularly exaggerated in the US. The next thing to happen is going to be a bear market. And now, I don't know when it will happen. I've started talking about this since 2011, officially. Unofficially, it's been a little bit before. But a bear market will happen. Now, while it's going up, I'm happy to be bullish. Got no problem. The market's going up. No problem. But when the bear market happens, this creates fear. What happens when there's more fear in the markets? Volatility goes up. Everyone gets scared. Things become more expensive. People start losing their jobs, is to give you the real world example. Things become more expensive. Commodities go up because, yeah, you get what I'm saying. Fear creates an increase in volatility. Everyone starts panicking. Real world example, earthquake happens. People start panicking and buying bottled water. That's panic. That creates fear. People do stupid things with fear. So in the financial markets, 
what happens when there's more fear in the market? Volatility goes up. Options are primarily priced on, vol on uh, an increase in volatility, it's a big factor on how they're priced. So if there's going to be an explosion of volatility, the next opportunity over the next decade is going to be trading options. Long-winded answer, but it's hard to argue with the evidence. So where is the next opportunity? That's what I'm more interested in, Patrick. Sorry, just catching up on the questions. Does everyone get this? Does everyone understand why, why we're talking about this? <laughs> this is Jimmy. Yeah. Stockpiling calls yet? Yeah, the same thing. It happened in the EU with Brexit. We saw it in a mini way. Everyone was panicking. People were losing their minds over um, it was coming out of the EU and it was causing nonsense and everyone was panicking and the prices of things are going up. That's fear. We've just we've just experienced the same thing. The volatility goes up when. When volatility goes up, things get more expensive. So, what we're going to look at, we, we've talked on the why I'm doing this. Again, the unannounced part two was never get stopped out again. Start thinking about probability and go from a 33% probability only trade to 66% probability in one simple step. And we've talked on the why I'm doing this, the big picture why, the, the thing that I believe is going to happen over the next 10 years. We talked about what I've done previously. I've traded currencies before they were popular. I got out while the going was good, and now we're doing the same thing with options. So that I'm positioning myself for the next opportunity. And I believe that you should too. And again, and the opportunity to do it is far greater than you could do on currencies. To give you a quick comparison before we do go on, when I was, I, I was uh, trading quite heavily currencies, and you could make an average day's move on the pound against the dollar it was about 150 pips, 150 pips, 130, 150 pips. It was really easy to make 80 to 100 pips a day, really easy. But then things change. The volatility went. When was the last time you saw a, a cent and a half move on a regular daily basis? That's it. That was its average movements. On average, that's what it did every day. That's what it does on average every week. It's really hard to make the same type of money that you did back in 2005. Again, this comes back to what we were talking about. There's a better um, use of your time and resources elsewhere. Anyway, without further ado, I think you've got my conspiracy theories, <coughs> consp conspiracy theories aside. Let's talk about the trading and what you can do tomorrow. So, do I use fundamental? Paul, I appreciate the the the, um, the use of fundamental analysis. Uh, initially, I was just really lazy not to do it, but I still appreciate it. I'm a, uh, these days a complete technical trader. I, I base all my decisions based off the charts. Again, I do appreciate fundamental analysis. I'm just too lazy to learn. I, I've spent 20 years learning charts and, and price action and price behavior. That's really my speciality. I, I'm too long in the tooth to learn anything else, and a little bit lazy if I'm going to be, you know, bluntly honest with you. Right. So, what are we going to do? Where are we at? Let's collect my thoughts. So, never get stopped out again. Uh, I think you've all got the. Uh, I think you've all got this. The answer. How do we never get stopped out again? So, if you put your, let's say that you put your trade on. Do 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 do. You put your trade on. And you've got your stop loss just here below the market. Around about there in this hypothetical example. Now what happens is you might have mistimed your entry and been stopped out. But then only with a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, you would see price turn around because everyone expects a perfect trade. But the reality is, is prices oscillate back and forth. And there's a good chance that you might get your stop pinged and you're stopped out. And quite often it's to the penny. I mean, think about the last time. Think about all the times that you've placed a trade, you've been stopped out, and then you saw the stock or the, or the trade or the opportunity. It just did what you thought it was going to do in the first place and went straight to the target that you thought it would get to in the first place. And guess what? It did it without you and you're not making any money. If you can not be stopped out ever again, 
then you've got the opportunity to get to target. And the way that I do that is with options. So how do we, let's just talk about profits. So that, does that make sense? So we're going to use options. We're going to use stock options, and we're going to go through them in a moment. Uh, I've got ahead of myself. Okay, so we're going to use stock options. So how to never get stocked out again. It's all about changing the way that you place the trade. Does, that, does everyone get that? Changing the way that you place trade. You can use uh, stock. You can use uh, Forex. Excuse my uh, childlike handwriting. Uh, futures. Where, how else can we place trade? We can use CFDs. And all this to manage the risk on this. This is on exit risk management. What does that mean? That means that you need to put a stop loss in the market. So if you're wrong, it will close your position and you've got an acceptable, manageable loss. Now with options, it's different. Options. It's on, let's just change the thing, it's on entry risk management. Does anyone know what on entry risk management might mean in this context? Yeah, when you enter the trade, yeah, absolutely, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a bit of an obvious one. It's on entry. So when you enter the trade, you've you've assigned an acceptable risk prior to putting the trade on on the entry so that you don't have to put a stop loss in the market. So it doesn't matter what happens, how wrong you are, your loss is fixed. And again, it comes back to, um, to using stock options. Again, I just want to be clear, I'm not talking about binary options. Please don't mistake me for talking about that bullshit game. Binary options, no. St actual exchange traded options. So if you want to get an idea of what, uh, how you could trade, you can have a look at uh, the, uh, go to thinkorswim.com, go to thinkorswim.com, and you can sign up for a paper trading account. I get no remuneration, no kickback. It's just a really good account to learn on. You can open a paper trading account or a paper money account with Think or Swim. And you'll, you can be up and running in 10 minutes. I'm not suggesting that you open a brokerage account with them because everyone's got different preferences and different choices. And please note that there are, there are other brokerages available. But for a demo account, you can be up and running in five minutes and you can take a look at options. You can get some charts. You can do the, use the indicators that we've talked about because they're all, they're all here. Here's an example. So... This is uh, this is what the platform looks like. So just waiting for the uh, data to load. So you've got an example. You can get charts over here on the left. You can get the uh, the Bollinger Band indicator. You can see it's uh, just there. This is Netflix, for example. Um, point is, is that you get access to charts and data. Again, it's a demo account. You can practice it. But more importantly you get access to um, options data. It's 10 minute delayed for what we're doing. At least it'll give you an idea of kind of what it all, what it all looks like. Uh, where's my, oh, I've lost my presentation. There we go, okay. So we can go to Think or Swim. So you'll get a demo account, you can uh, have a little look and that will uh, allow you to start exploring this concept of never being stopped out. So, Okay, so we're gonna what, very quick. Uh, one thing I want to start. One, uh, one thing that I'd like to start thinking about is about probability. I might have to uh, appreciate. I'm going a little bit longer, so if everyone's okay, I will continue. But I would like everyone to start thinking about probability instead of thinking about the success rates or strike rates or risk reward ratios and other such nonsense. Again, I've never looked at risk reward ratios. It, it, if you've got a high expectancy strategy and it's not got the risk reward that you might think from the textbooks and you don't place the trade, then you're just you're cutting your nose off to spite your face. It's a ridiculous way of, of trading. 
So let's start thinking about probability. If you've got a probability-based outcome and you can close 85% of your trades profitable, then why not? Why not not worry about the risk reward ratio? But anyway, a basic idea of probability. What is the probability of a stock price going up? So question to you, what is the probability of the stock price going up? So, uh, 50, so to be fair, there's quite a few 50%, 50%. No. I'd love to say that it's a trick question, but it should be obvious in just a few moments. So the probability of a, a prices, any price, stock price, forex, currencies, anything, prices going up is not 50%. This is not a 50-50 trading game. It's not as simple as the, as the stock price going up or down, because the stock price can also remain unchanged. And you will see this on illiquid stocks, where the stock price does not move at all. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, it stays exactly the same, sometimes for weeks, months and years. Yeah. So the reality is, just to be right on direction, your probability is 33%. Again, I'm just, I appreciate this might be a little bit basic for some people, but I just want to get everyone who's not on the same, who everyone thinks it's 50-50, it's not 50-50. It never was 50-50. It is not a coin toss. It's the biggest fallacy when people start talking about this in relation to the, the stock market. This is not a 50-50. 50 trading opportunity. And just understand that. The probability that you are right on direction, if you just randomly pick a stock out of the newspaper, if you still get them, just randomly pick a stock, to be right on direction, it's 33%. Now, with the process that we have, that we've been through, what we can do, if we're, we're stacking edges, we're stacking opportunity, and we're stacking probabilities, We've got a statistical price extreme on the selection method that we've got. We're also trying to go with the main flow of the money. What's going on in the last 12 months? If it's going up, find a dip in an uptrend. If that dip in the uptrend is at a statistical extreme, great. Are we at a logical stopping point? You might call that support. Then we're showing a sign of exhaustion. What's price behavior doing? And we, again, we've done this in a very simple, very methodical, very mechanical fashion. So you can automate that process very clinically, regardless of your experience. Now, by doing that, it starts to stack the odds, the opportunity, the selection process that we get to this point. And by doing that selection process alone, it contributes to closing trades. Uh, what is my little widget? Contributes to closing trades 68% of the time. Again, the alerts that I sent out are based on this method. And 68% of the time, again, it fluctuates, as you can appreciate, 67 all the way up to 72 is my own personal range. But at the moment, 68% of the time, I'm closing trades profitably because of the selection process and the method that I'm going to show you next. And that's to replace what you're currently doing with stock options. So... We go from 33%, I've actually got a little bit of typo that 68% of the moment, but we go from, at the very best, the very best probability that you have, picking direction, 33%. Think about what you're doing. You've probably not even got that, 33% of the time making money. When you put a stop loss in the market, that drops to below 20%, and likely it's closer to 12%. When you've got a stop loss in the market, that's your probability depending on how good you are at the selection process, anywhere from 12 to 20%. Without a stop loss, randomly, random selection, 33%. With the hoop jumping and the selection process that, that we've got and using stock options, we take that to 68%. That's, that's the power of this. So we're going to go through a stock replacement strategy. Time for the notepads again, folks. 
So we need to just backtrack a little bit because again, I appreciate that not everyone might be on the same page. I'm going to go through this quite quickly. So we're probably going to be wrapped up in the next 15, 20 minutes. Uh, it's relatively straightforward to go through. I'm just trying to give you, again, appreciate you've taken time out of your day. I'm just trying to kind of give you an idea of uh, when we might be wrapping up soon. So a simple stock replacement strategy. All we're going to do is we're going to replace what you've done previously with stocks, futures, forex, CFDs. We're going to replace that traditional way of trading with a stop loss. We're going to take, we're going to put that in the bin and we're going to use stock options. So what is an option? An option, best way of thinking about it, it's like a deposit. Let's just say that you buy a car and again, I can't draw a car. <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't do well in school with art, but you get the idea. You've got You've got, you, let's just say that you go to a car dealer. Let's just say that you go to a car dealer and you want to buy a car. You want to buy a car. So what you do is you like the car in the forecourt and let's just say it costs £10,000. So you like the car, it's got £10,000 on the sticker and there's no other car like it. It's got all the trim, it's got all the bells and whistles that you like and but you can't afford it to buy it today. So what you do, you go to the car dealer and you say, okay, can I reserve that car? And he goes, yeah, sure. Leave a deposit and I'll hold it for you till the end of the month. Cool. And then you've got until the end of the month, let's just say that's 30 days away. You've got till the end of the month to find the money or the finance or whatever to pay for the car. So you control the car. You don't own it, but you control it because no one else can buy it. And the car dealer can't sell it. You control the car. Does everyone get that idea? So with the power of a deposit, you control the car. So you control the car. Now, if the value of that car went from 10000 to 20000 let's just say it doubles just to make it easy. If the car price doubles, you've still, and we've reserved it for 10000 it's now worth 20000 your deposit guarantees that you buy it at 10000 Now, what will happen is if you wanted to, you could sell that deposit to someone else. And what typically happens in this example with stock options, again, just replace the word car with stock. What will happen is you'll get between uh, sorry, 50 and 80% of the, of the increase. So it's increased by 10, 10 grand, you can get between 50 and 80% of the value that the car increased, the option will increase by that because you've reserved it at 10,000, that deposit's got extra value in it. So that, that, you know, the very simplest way of explaining what we're doing is it's a deposit. Now let's just take it the other way. The car price goes, for, goes to 10 to 20, and then let's just say uh, a, a ton of bricks drops on it. It's now worth zero. It's got zero value whatsoever. You don't own the car. It's not yours. You just controlled it. You had the right to buy that car in 30 days. You didn't have to. It's just reserved. But now the car's worth nothing. What's the worst case scenario? You, you don't owe the dealer the value of the car. You own You've given them a 10% deposit. You've only lost your deposit. Does everyone get this? It's a real world example of what we're doing with stock options. The car goes up, you get a proportional value. If the car goes down, you lose your deposit. That's it. That's, a, that's essentially options. It's not, again, folks, before the questions come in, it's not quite accurate but just to get everyone on the same page with the idea. It is refundable, Jim. It is refundable in the options world. You can get cash back. You can sell out or sell it back to the market at any time you want. I'm just trying to give people an idea that it's, um, it, it's like a deposit, but it is refundable to, to stick with the analogy, to stick with the analogy, Jim. So let's go and take a look at this. So we've got, oops, a daisy. Let's go back to Netflix. So what we have, this is like a uh, spreadsheet. So stock replacements. Let's just, let's go to the chart first of all. So stock replacement. Let's just say Netflix. 
What's it doing? It's going up. Let's assume that everything else meets the criteria. We were in a retracement. We've got the statistical price that's running. We've got a nice sign of exhaustion. Let's just assume that we're bullish. So I, I believe that the stock will continue to go higher, mainly because it's already been going up. So there's a good chance that it'll probably continue. That's my assumption. So let's move away from the chart for a moment. So let's say we're, we're bullish on the stock and I'll benefit if the stock price goes higher. So how do we replace the traditional trade with an option? First of all, get an options account. You can have a, a demo account here. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we've got enough time. So another common trait with uh, deposits and options is there's a, there's a time. So all of these lines here, these all represent time. So this is the option chain. Now, for my style of trading, I require um, about 30 to 45 days worth of time. For me, that's plenty of time and plenty of change for the trade to do its thing. Now, ideally, I want to close out at a profit 10 to 12 days. So it's very short term what I'm doing, 10 to 12 days. But the backup plan is if I'm wrong, I've got some extra time to try and manage the trade. I've got to kind of figure it out. You know, I've got time to kind of uh, um, manage the position. Because if we're not being stopped out, again, remember, we're not being stopped out anymore. It doesn't matter how wrong you are. It doesn't matter. Stock price can go from $50 to zero, and then it can go from zero to $100. I'll okay, get really dramatic example, but you're never going to be stopped out. But you've got the opportunity, you've got a second chance, you've got to go around. You get the opportunity to manage the trade better. So in a perfect world, if I'm right, I'll get to close at a profit very quickly. But if I'm not initially right, I get a second bite of the cherry because I've got a little bit of extra time to manage my position. And it might be for a break even, but usually it's for a small profit still with this. So the key elements here, if you want to write it down, 30 to 45 days. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look down this list of options, deposits, that has, again, this number in brackets has got um, days. So I've got, there's one with 37 and there's one with 51. So now, which option do I choose? It, oops, press the wrong buttons here. It's between, it's between these two, April the 7th and April the 21st. So I've got now two options, because then, big question, which one do I choose? I've, there's so much choice. Which do we choose? Which do we choose? Well, 30 to 45 days, that's the one I want. And then that gives me two choices. I can have a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, sorry, between 30 and 45, or a little bit more at 51 days. Okay, so they're the two closest options to the time range that I want. Is that cool? So which option? So that's the one that I open. 30 days, 30 to 45, or in this case, 37 days. I've got 37 days to be right. 37 days to be right. So is everyone happy with that? That's the first one. So which option do I look at? I want to make sure that I've got enough time is the first one. So yes, 30, uh, uh, the question is 30 to 45 days. It's 30 to 45 days. That's the life of the option. That's the life of the deposit. All deposits have a lifespan. Options are the same. So I've, this will expire because what we're doing here is instead of reserving a car like in our pithy little example, I'm reserving stock. I'm not buying stock. I'm not selling stock. I'm reserving stock. I've got the rights to buy or sell stock in, in this case, 37 days. So my option will expire in 37 days. Now I want to get, I'm using this as a stock replacement. I'm not going to take delivery of the stock. I don't want the stock. I'm using options as a different way to place the trade. So I'm using them to speculate in exactly the same way as you would spread bet or you would buy stock or you would Forex or futures or CFDs, whatever your thing is. I'm just using options as a different vehicle. 
Does that make sense? So it's just a different way. And I want to make sure I've got enough time. The style of training that we've been through will usually be right in about 10 to 12 days. But if I'm wrong, I've got some extra time to be able to manage the trade better, more effectively. So that's why I want 30 to 45 days. Now, if you want a bit more, there's nothing wrong with it. It's better to have a little bit more time than too little time. So 30 to 45 days. The next thing that we want to consider is there's now two sides here, two sides. We've got calls and puts. And then down the center is the strike price. So which one's which? Little rhyme that I like, I'm going to call, when I speak to someone on the phone, I'm going to call my friend up, and when I finish talking with them, I'm going to put the phone down. So think about the actions that we've just described. When you speak to someone on the phone, you call them up. So calls would benefit in an upward movement of the stock's price. I would call somebody up. So calls, stock goes up. And when I finish talking to that person on the phone, I would put the phone down. So puts are down. So puts will benefit if the stock price goes down. So when I speak to someone on the phone, I call somebody up. And when I finish talking to them, I put the phone down. So just a, a really quick way to explain which one's which. So when we looked at the chart, we said we're bullish. We'll benefit if the stock goes up. So now I don't need to worry about this side. I only need to focus my attention on the left hand side here because this is calls and we're bullish and we'll benefit if the stock price goes up. So now you see how we're reducing all the information because part of the problem here is information overload. Well, what parts can we ignore? Well, if I'm bullish and I'm only looking for uh, 30, 30 to 45 days, great, I'm going to look, focus all my attention on the calls. So now we've got all these strikes. So what are the strikes? The strikes down the center is the price that you agree on. So like when you were uh, going back to our car dealer example, the car, the price of the car is $10,000 or 10,000 pounds, whatever, $10,000. So that was the price that we struck a deal on for our deposit. Note the wording. If you, want to re if you want to put a deposit on the car, you would strike a deal with the car dealer. Now, we're going to do the same with the options. We can select any one that we want, and we'll come on to that in a moment. But down the center, it's the strike prices. It's the price of the stock that you're reserving. So, for example, I might be, so the price that I'm circling here is $143. So if that's the option that I want, I would be reserving the stock at the price of $143. Now the current stock price is $142. So if the stock price was to rally, then say to $160, I've reserved my stock at $143. So I can buy that stock at a better price. That's the idea. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sell it back to the market and cash out. I'm going to collect the profits because the value of the option will increase proportionally. So Stock replacement strategy, 30 to 45 days, figure out whether you're bullish or bearish. If you're bullish, it's going to be calls. Bearish is going to be puts. In this example, we're going through calls. So I'm going to be a buyer. Stock replacement, you're going to be a buyer of puts. And if you think the stock goes down, you would still be a buyer of puts. I want to stress this. To replace what you're doing already, you would buy calls and you would still buy puts. You're going to be a buyer of either. So I just want to stress that. Now we're talking about calls, so we want the stock price to go up. We're going to be a buyer of calls. So which one? There's several in view here. And I don't know if you can note, there's a different shade. There's two different shades to the options. So we've got a slightly uh, straw or yellowy color and there's a white background here. So this refers to in the money and out the money. In the money, the option has value in it. It's got the stock price factored in it. That means that you can exercise the option at the price you reserve. So if you reserve $140 strike or shares $140, there's already 
two dollars worth of value in it. So it's got stock price valued into the option. It's got the time value plus the stock's value. Now I don't want to do that. So to replace what I'm doing originally, I'm going to look at where this division is. And I'm going to buy one strike or the first strike out, uh, out the money, OTM, the first strike out the money. And that's where this white one is here. So the first strike out the money, that's the $143 strike. And I would very simply select the buy price. So all we're going to do is the first strike out the money. I'm going to right click. I'm going to buy a single option and it would populate an order. I don't know if you just saw that at the bottom. So all we did here is we right clicked, click buy, single, and then it populated an order at the bottom. So this for me is the first strike out the money. And that's the strategy, folks. That's as simple as it gets. So you pick the direction of the stock, you select the stock with the process that we've been through, and then you replace what you've done traditionally with an option. We have 30 to 45 days of time, and I'm going to select the first strike out the money. I've got some training videos that explain this in more detail, but again, this is the, again, I'm making certain assumptions. I've tried to give the people who aren't familiar with options a quick the whistle stop tour so you can kind of follow along. If you're familiar with options, this will make sense. If it was too much too soon, this has been recorded, so don't worry about it. I've also got training videos that explains this in a more step-by-step -step fashion. So again, don't worry about it if you didn't get it first time. I appreciate it's all brand new. I've got this process already recorded. You can watch it again and again and again. But that's the stock replacement strategy. So if I reserve my my uh, shares, I'm using an option to do that. It's going to cost me, let's just say that it costs me $2 per share. There's 100 shares on, every, uh, you control 100 shares on every option, so 100 shares. So it would cost me $200 to control 100 shares. That's my deposit. If I'm wrong, it doesn't matter how wrong I am, the stock can go from $140 to zero. It could lose every single penny between today and tomorrow. My risk is still only $200. Now, if that was to happen, if the stock price was to lose 50% of its value, let's just go to the chart for a second. Let's just say this scenario happens. So I've bought my call, so I want the stock price to go higher. And let's just say for a moment the stock price sells off and it loses. 50% of its value, a really dramatic example, it loses 50% of its value. My risk was $200 here, with no stop loss, my risk is still $200 down here. I do not lose, it doesn't matter how bad things get, I will not lose any more than $200. That's it. So this is what we meant by on entry risk management. I don't need a stop loss anymore. Now, what often happens is if you are wrong, again, this is a dramatic example to illustrate the point, but if you are wrong, like over here, if you are wrong, if you bought up here and you're wrong, you get a go around. You've got 45 days to be right. There's a good chance you can recover the position in that again, it's scenario. So what you get is if you're not being stopped down, you get the chance, a second chance, that the stock will do what you thought it was going to do in the first place. Now, if you tie this in with the selection process that we have, if you're buying the dip in an uptrend or selling the rally in a downtrend, you can be wrong on the timing. It allows you to make a few mistakes on the entry, because let's face it, when you're learning, we'll make a few mistakes. But it, with this selection process that we have, find a statistical price of trading, which way is the stock going? Are we at support? Is there a sign of exhaustion? We're stacking the odds of success in our favor. And if you are wrong, initially, you're not being stopped out. You'll never be stopped out again. I'm not saying you won't lose money, but you will never be stopped out again. 
and you get this go around. You get this second chance to close the trade at a small profit or even often you'll see it do what you thought it was going to do in the first place. This is the whole reason why, as I keep saying, 68% of the time, the alerts that I send out in real time before the market opens are closed profitably. And now you know exactly what I do from soup to nuts, from start to finish, the stocks that I select, how I select them, and the majority of the time, this is how I put the trade on, one strike out the money with options. That's it, folks. You know everything that you need to know to get going, uh, literally tomorrow, with finding, filtering, and sorting stocks and opportunities that are ready to trade. Ooh. It was a rough ride, wasn't it, folks? It was a rough ride. 200, uh, sorry, just catch up with the questions. So, 200, in that example, yes, $200. So, the comment is 200 is the deposit, hence the only loss is the deposit. Yes, that, that's absolutely correct. Um, uh, uh, I'm really poorly pronouncing your name. Jochan? Jochan? Sorry, I'm not pronouncing your name right. I'm sure I'm not. Um, Joaquin, there we go. I believe. Yeah. Got a little, little bit more. But I just want to catch a breath. Any initial questions? And then, if everyone will allow me, um, I, I do have a little little something for everyone. I'm sure Simon can uh, just allow me just five more minutes, and then we'll be done. OTO, out the, uh, out, it was OTM, uh, John. It was out the money. OTM. It was my poor handwriting. OTM, out the money. Tax implications, Andrew, you're going to have to speak to your tax advisor. I am not a tax advisor. I don't know your personal situation. I don't know your lifestyle. I don't know where you live. Speak to your accountants. I'm sorry, I've got to defer that, Andrew. I don't know your personal situation. Pro uh, profit targets. Um, usually, if you're buying the dips in an uptrend, a retest of the high is what I'm looking for. Let me just find a very quick example. Uh, Let's just do this one. Okay, so if very quick example, if you're buying the dips in an uptrend, where's my little scribble stick? So if you're buying the dips in an uptrend and you're buying the retracements, typically I would expect expect a retest of the recent highs. So just a very if you're buying the retracements, looking for a retest. Again, it's not big money, but it's consistent. It's high probability of low dollar movements. Now low dollar could be anywhere from two percent to ten percent of the stock to value. So if you're buying the retracements, a retest of the recent high is good. Again, buy it. it's not really a great example, but you get the idea. Let's just see if we can find another one. If you're buying the retracements, typically this is what we'd be doing, a deep retracement. So you've got a rally, a retracement, again, and then you're looking for that retest of the high. Now you can add in your own chart reading. Again, I usually talk about that with my mentoring students who have got a, perhaps a little bit more experience. They can add some charting analysis into the mixing pots. Um, but most of the time, if we're buying the dips in an uptrend, selling the rally in a downtrend, you're looking for a retest of that recent high. So again, rally, retrace, we're buying here, and you're looking for that retest of the high. Again, that's probably what we're looking for. Again, most of the time, that can be anywhere from 2% of the stock's value, anywhere up to 10% of the stock's value. It can be very, very lucrative. I think that's it. I think we've covered most of the questions, to be honest, as we've gone along. Uh, I think the only thing I didn't miss was the the stock, the, uh, the, the targeting, yeah. So, um, to be fair, folks, thank you very much for the time. I've just got two or three more things. For those of you who do want to take it further, because, again, I'd imagine there's a few people who want to know more. There's always somebody who wants to know more. And if you're the sort of person that does want to know more or want to take it to the next step and you think that, hey, you know, what we've spoken about today, that really resonates with me. This process, it takes less than 20 to 30 minutes per day to find trading opportunities and put those stocks uh, on as trades. So if you are looking for the next step, I've got something just for you. Um, so it takes two or three minutes and then we can be on our way. 
So what I do, I do two things. Firstly, I guarantee your success. I'm probably the only person in the industry that will guarantee your success. So the first thing that I do is one-on-one -on -one mentorship, and I want to emphasize mentorship. It's a mentorship in the true sense, in that you learn a skill. My job is to teach you how to trade. And the way I do that is I guarantee your success. So there's no time limit on our work. But if you want me to mentor you, we'll need about 60 minutes a day, three times a week. And I will teach you the skill of trading. We take you from where you are right now, wherever that is. It could be the first day that you're learning how to trade, or you could be an experienced veteran who just needs to a new skill with options. But we'll take you from where you are right now all the way through to successfully telling me what I'm trading for the day. So I teach you a skill. Again, I want to emphasize that. It usually takes about 30 to 45 days. Surprise, surprise. And um, sometimes it takes less. Some people have learned this in 20 days. But if you what I'm trying to emphasize is it's not time-based, it's skill-based. And we'll know when you've got that skill and you've got it mastered. So I work with you. Uh, in a true mentorship to teach you a skill. So that's the first thing I do. So if you want to know more about that, again, it's not for everyone. Not for everyone. I have an application process. I want to make sure that it's right for you. And if it is right for you, then yeah, sure, we'll look at the next step. If it's not right for you, I'll try and point you in the right direction. So if you want to get in touch, we do have an application. And the second thing which most people are probably more interested in is they want a little bit of help to get going. So the second thing that I offer is look over my shoulder alerts. I basically do this process for you uh, and send out the daily trades that I'm trading. You have stock entry, exit, and target details. And um, some people do spread bet with these folks. Again, please understand that I'm not spread betting myself, but they are spread bet friendly. Um, more specifically, I have the option details with the uh, or everything that we've just talked about: the strikes, the entries, the prices, the targets that we were that you were asking me about. And again, it can be used for spread betting. But again, I just want to stress: please understand, I am not spread betting. I am trading with options. So I send out daily alerts. My objective is to find one thing to trade every day. And sometimes I might find three, four, five things to trade, but you will get one solid trade alert that I'm personally trading every single day. And that is uh, essentially what we're doing. So we have uh, coaching and mentorship. If you want to kind of fast track yourself to success, you can share off maybe five years of learning by yourself. Uh, or you can get the daily alerts if you want to get what I'm looking, what I'm trading. The alerts go out prior to the market opens, so there's no funny business, no oh, market's closed. There's no funny business, no front running. It, you get the same crack of the whip as everyone else. It's prior to the market opening. So the the, the alerts look something like that. You get a nice little image. You get some analysis. You get the stock triggers. You get the option triggers and. Uh, all the details there. I'm sure Simon can just drop the link in, but if you go to the um, my website, Baboab, B-A-B-O-A-B dot com forward slash Simon. I think Simon's just popped the link in the, the chat box. But if you want to go there, you can get my contact details or you can sign up for the alerts. Now, if you do sign up for the alerts, now Simon wasn't didn't know that I was going to do this, but if you do sign up for the alerts today or tomorrow, so in the next 24 to 48 hours, I will personally hop on a call with just you. I'll give you a very quick private mentoring to help you get set up so that you can get the most out of uh, the alerts and how to do it. And maybe just give you a little bit of an introduction to the option side. Again, as I said earlier, I have got a lot of time for people who are genuinely serious about their success when it comes to trading. And I've got a lot of success. I've got a 100% success rate in getting people profitable. Uh, simply because I put the time in to you. If you're prepared to give me the commitment of your time, I'm prepared to do the work with you. So for anyone who does actually decide to sign up for the alerts in the next 24 hours, uh, 24 to 48 hours, again, we'll set a time, we'll have a chat, we'll, we'll get you set up and up and running and fast-tracked with the alerts. Uh, the mentorship side of it, it is an application process, and as I said before, we take you from where you are now to making consistent and profitable active investment decisions. Uh, just a quick, uh, you know, success stories. Um, 
You can see here, you know, I made 3% in my first month testing, then 20% in month two. I'm now averaging 8 to 12% returns every month. Ma the majority of people send me this. This isn't one isolated person. Um, I have many, many uh, testimonials. You can see a lot of them on my homepage. People have spent a lot of time handwriting letters. You handwrite a letter these days. People post me things to say, you know, how much I've helped them, $125,000, $2, $140. We've got my industry peers, hedge fund experts, trading academy experts, and investment managers. I'm the real deal, folks. You know, I put myself out there if you're prepared to, you know, put your faith and trust in me. Uh, Badar House uh, made 30% there. Steve's made $920 on Tesla. Uh, again, check out the homepage. So if you've got, oops, all right. If you've got questions, comments, if I've not answered your question or you've got anything that you want to speak to me about, I'm very accessible. You can pick up the, well, Skype me, I would prefer, or you can email me. Um, but if you do decide to um, to join the fun, as it were, I will help you get where you need to be. Again, I think I'm the only person, in fact, I know I'm the only person that guarantees to you know help you get where you need to be. I can't guarantee results. No one can guarantee results, but I can guarantee your success and that you will be able to apply the methods successfully uh, in exactly the same way that I'm doing because I will commit to your success. And I think that's where we're at. Um, I don't see any further questions or comments. Uh, so I think we've got it all. Uh, let me just have a quick final check. Uh, can you teach weekly options as well? George, it is a part of the process. Yes, we can look at weekly options. Um, it's not primarily what I do. Um, again, I want to go out and put my trades on and then go and read the paper and have a coffee and read a book and kind of just enjoy life. You know, I've spent my time day trading. I've done that, as it were. Uh, I just don't want to do it anymore. So, you know, my, my trading is based around the lifestyle that I want and not the other way around. So if you want a bit more active investing, if you like, and a bit more screen time, then yeah, you can tweak some of the strategies. And part of the, the mentorship program is to, to kind of figure out what you want from your training, and not just to be a clone of me. So yeah, we go through the training and the education side, but part of what we do in the mentorship program is to is to is to really figure out what is it you want from your training and how can we kind of tweak the methodology so that you get the most out of it relative to your situation and your lifestyle. Uh, how much do you need to have to start? Um, with options, the, the this is what changed. So uh, the, the question is, is, how much do you need to start to trade options? This is the big thing that changed back in 2009. The margin requirements changed for the better. So it is as I've described. If you have, um, if you have a, if you buy an option for a dollar per share, that would cost you a hundred dollars. So that's your margin. That's your risk and your margin. It doesn't cost you any more or less. So you can start with relatively small accounts without risking or leveraging yourself in any bizarre or crazy way. So you don't need that much. And you can start with uh, most accounts are between five thousand and ten thousand US dollars, um, but you're again you're not um, you don't have the the capital outlay that's required for each trade because if you were to put the same trade on with say a spread bet even at a pound of points, the the margin requirements to hold that position open are what is it these days is it twenty twenty five percent the margin requirements are quite high compared to the stock's value, whereas with the option, your risk is defined on the entry with whatever's acceptable for you. If you want to trade with uh, some of the strategies you can apply, you can trade with uh, $50 of, of risk if you want to do it that way, and just go really slow and really small. So you, again, you don't have to bet the farm, as it were. And if you're wrong, it's not a big deal. You, you're in it for $50, for example. The worst case scenario is $50. Whereas the worst case scenario, if the market jumps or gaps or non-farm payrolls is something bizarre and crazy, risk is just fifty dollars. It doesn't matter how wrong you are; the risk is fixed, and that's the on-entry risk management. Um, eight to twelve, eight to twelve, George, eight to twelve percent is that an expected average? That's what my students tell me. That's what my students tell me. So. Um, so uh, to be fair, yeah, <laughs> that's what that's the feedback. It, it obviously varies. Some months you're going to have uh, potentially thirty percent 
that's in some reports, 20% of head reports back, as little as 4%. You're going to have some losing months. I'm not going to bullshit you folks. You will have losing months. But the losses are, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4%. I've not seen anything. There's, no one's reported back worse than 4% in a month. But then the previous month for, for um, uh, what was his name, Andre? Andre. Terrible with names, as you, as you probably gather. 4% 4, 4 was uh, a bad month for him, but the previous month he was up 20%. So on average, you're going to make 8 to 12%. You know, it, it works out in the long term. You're going to have good months, you're going to have bad months. On average, it works out fine. Uh, it is relative to your wealth. The more money you have, the less percentage you might make. That's just the nature of most businesses. Again, just put some reality on it. But with small accounts... You know, the big numbers are, are quite possible. Uh, Ian, there's no coupon code. It does prompt you for it if you just leave it blank if you sign up. There is no coupon code. Uh, so to learn option trading skill, would you need to take the, the mentorship? Jim, yeah, that's that's correct. Let me just see if there's... Is what you, if you take the mentorship, you actually get the alert service for 12 months as a part of the arrangement, Jim. So if you want to talk about that more, if, to be fair, if anybody wants to talk about the mentorship, my email is on the screen, my Skype is on the screen. If you want to talk, we basically have a, an application process, we have a chat, there's no pressure. It's just to see if it's right for you. Um, you know, I, I, we're going to be spending time together. I want to make sure that you know, you're doing the right thing and it is generally the right thing for your situation. <clears throat> Let me just have a quick slurp. Nambella, the, the mentorship program, we actually go through, the cost is, I, I don't want to shock everyone, it's not cheap folks, that's why I say it's not for everyone. Um, I'm going to be committing at least a month and a half of my life to getting you fast track to success. And I charge £5,000 for that. And just think about it. I guarantee that you will be able to do it. So we work until the job's done, and that takes time. You're getting the benefit of my 22 years' experience. I've written books. I've consulted around the world. I've run my own hedge funds. I know what I'm doing, and I know how to get the most out of you to get you where you need to be. Now, to make sure that you're the right type of person that I can coach, we need to have a conversation. So if you're interested, shoot me a message. Uh, so Ash, Ted, and Umbella, I think you were all asking about the prices. Um, yeah, you get the alert service as a part of the arrangement. So if you want to, uh, to have a chat, we can certainly go through it. Um, but yeah, it, again, I just want to stress that the mentorship side of it, it's a guarantee. No one guarantees your success. That's, you will be, a, by the end of our time together, we go take you from where you are now. It doesn't matter how experienced or inexperienced you are. I've had a gentleman, I've just finished working with uh, Steve actually, a gentleman, he's 78 years old. And we took a little bit longer. It took about nearly two months, but we got him from literally day one was his first day with me. And then after two months, he, he was successfully making trades. This is Steve here. This is Steve. This is the guy I've just finished working with. Oh, not long finished work, but he's closed Tesla, three more trades to close, $920 in this past week, and this is the, he's 78 years old. You know, if he can do it, and you know, today's his first day, I'm sure you can. So what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to highlight is I'm going to teach you a skill, and I guarantee that you will be able to do it, and I'll work with you until the job is done. You get 12 months support. Uh, if you need, I'm, I'm, as you probably gather from it, I'm pretty flexible. If you need more, I'm not going to be an arse. And, you know, on 12 months in a day, it stops. I've had people call me up three, three years after working with me and say, hey, Phil, can I just have a quick refresher on this subject? Yeah, sure. Pick up the phone. We'll have a conversation. We'll make sure that you understand the thing that we're trying to do. And, you know, we get you going. As I keep saying, I've got a very serious commitment to anyone who's got... Uh, a vested interest in making this success. And the reason why is the reason why I do this is because when I started, I had no one, no one. I didn't know there was this online community. And bear in mind, this was two thousand, uh, sort of ninety nine, two thousand. When I went full time, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, 
I was housebound for three years and I had to keep the lights on. At the end of the month, I had to uh, pay the bills, put food on the table, and, I, and I, was, I couldn't go anywhere. I had nothing else to do and only one thing to do, and that was to trade. And I had to trade, I had to make it work. <laughs> so that was my indoctrination into full-time trading. That was my leap from doing it part-time for someone else to doing it full-time only for me. And it had to be successful. My boss came into hospital on my deathbed just after the priest had been into me and asked me for one of the last rites and said, when you get better, there's no job for you. That, that was the motivation I had to make trading work. So I know I can get you to be successful because I did it for myself. So when I started out, there was no one to guide me, no one to help me. I made every mistake possible. But the big difference is I learned from them fast, really fast. And because of that, because I've done everything that you could do wrong, and I learned from it fast, I can spot that in you. And I can see you making or potentially making the same mistakes. And I can help you navigate around the minefields. Now, when when you have someone like that to help you navigate the minefield, I've already stepped on the landmines, so you don't have to. You know, I can I can kind of help you just take a sidestep there, take it, do it slightly this way, do it that way. We get you fast track. That's why it works. And um, you know, it, it, it's uh, I'm passionate about what I do because no one was there to help me. If someone's interested, I've got all the time for you. Um, yeah, I was absolutely George. Yeah, he came into he came into the hospital and he said, "I'm glad to see that you're on the men's, but when you get fully better, uh, there's no job for it." And he gave me uh, my last month's pay and my Q45. What a nice guy! <laughs> so yeah, that, that was my. I better get something done. Yeah, it was, was very kind of him, George. Was very kind. What what I'm just trying to highlight is that it's. Yeah, I'll get you where you need to be. If you are if you want to make the right choices, the right decisions, just know that I've walked that path. And after, after quite a number of years of doing it, I can get you to be walking alongside me on that same journey very, very fast. If you were to try and do this on your own, sorry, Simon, last point, I know it's getting late. Um, the, if you were to try and do this on your own, most people who try and do it on their own, they spend about five years, five to six years, trying it on their own before they pick up the phone and, and speak to someone. And usually, they've blown several accounts. Maybe you are in that situation. Anywhere from five thousand to fifty thousand uh, dollars or pounds, depends on where you're on the world. That's usually the 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 expenditure of courses that haven't worked, accounts that they've blown up, trades that have gone wrong. You know, most people have spent quite a lot of time. I can help you avoid all that. And if you want to do it on your own, that's fine. You'll spend 10 years doing it. But if you don't want to spend 10 years learning how to do it trial and error, pick up the phone. I think I'm done, Simon. I think I'm done. <laughs> oh, no, Phil, I don't want to stop you. I, I just, I, I don't know that other people... I was on a roll. I was on a roll. I didn't notice that stepped on the soapbox giving a speech. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, your, your passion comes through. Uh, there's oh. nothing like being hungry. Uh, Having to keep the lights on as a motivator. Uh, to, oh, to I mean, I was I was hand drawing charts at sixteen. You know, it, it is in my blood. I absolutely love it. I mean, I'm just turned forty now, so you know, I've been doing that. I have been doing this a long time. Um, so you know, I, I think I've learned one or two things over the years. Well, I've had great feedback. From <laughs> attendees that have come through. I, I know we've, we've put quite a few people uh, your way uh, through the the round the clock. Uh, events and uh, heard nothing but good good feedback. Well, the feedback. My email inbox off the round the clock trade exploded, absolutely exploded. I couldn't. I missed so many questions, but you know, I got everyone's answered in the end. That's great. Well, it's been nice to have a slightly more leisurely uh, time with you tonight. Uh, thank you for giving up your evening, and uh, thank you, everybody. Yes. Um, thank you very much for your time. Um, it, it has been. Yeah, I appreciate each and every one of you stepping out. You spent a, you nearly well just over two hours with me, so I really appreciate that you've taken the time out your day, and uh, you know just decided to spend that with me this evening. So yeah, thank you very much, and you've made it a pleasure by just being very interactive and and just asking you know really smart questions. You know, so yeah. you know, thank you very much for yeah, great, turning up. Great, great audience, super. So fun, thank you very much uh, indeed, and uh, Phil, I think we'll, we'll we'll draw it to a close there. And uh, 
Now, I'm going to shut myself off now. So if someone, I can see the emails, I can see the Skypes. If you'll forgive it, it has been a long session. I'm just going to shut it off. I will answer everyone's questions, comments that I've missed and follow-up questions. If you shoot me a message, I'll get to them. But I will be doing it in my morning tomorrow. Wonderful. Many thanks. Phil Newton from Baboab.com. Thank you very much indeed. And thank you, everybody that's been on. Thank you for everybody that's, that's joined us tonight. And uh, uh, yes, options, uh, how to explain them in a simple way. I think he's done a great job. Um, and they can be uh, quite tricky. Wayne says, yeah, he's looking forward to, re to the recording to let it sink into his brain. So, <laughs> Wayne, the recording will be winging its way to you. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. And, uh, thanks very much. Until next time. Many thanks. Bye-bye for now. Bye.